that's really healthy. But either way, it was for, <laughs> for a good reason. It was like good intentions. And then I just started seeing a lot of things that were happening there that um that were very that again it was just like the application of a system in just a different way. Yeah. Um, so um and what systems work and which ones don't and which things do apply and which ones, and then that's how I realized like oh there is a connection if there, there's a bridge that I can start to make between how a body moves within a bigger field to how a body moves within a stage or within the relationship between bodies in a field yeah. the relationship between bodies on a stage and the individual reactions a body will have on a field yeah maybe improvise maybe react to somebody maybe moving maybe re- all this different change in the direction jumping land into like Chandan, that's like a that's a really good way of thinking about this i mean i love what you said about you know how you you are relating things from you know your um experience as an architecture but you know as a dancer too you have to be able to get feedback instantly when you're on stage right. you know just same thing at soccer like i have to make sure that he knows that he's about to like pick me up and that i'm gonna be able to give enough force for that to happen seamlessly or you know I should have more, a lot of awareness, which is very, um, very, very similar to soccer. And I just had this conversation with someone the other day, but they saw a lot of the same, same ideas or same principles in that, because that's essentially what it is, right? You have to feel, you have to move and, you know, the other person. Um, So I think that's really interesting that you said that. So personal, so reactionary. So just, yeah, that's the thing that, that um, strikes me the most is that, and that's why like, I keep going back always to this idea that, I mean, you hear all the time and then you hear more often now than before that like performers are athletes and all those things. But there's one thing, one thing is to like say it. Another thing is to fully like actually treat them like so and actually acknowledge what kind of athlete is it? What do they do? How do they react? How do they move? All that, all that stuff, which is, um, which I think is still yet to be like fully, 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 pushed and fully yeah. like, developed and, and really like not just developed but like ingrained in athletes or like or dancers and artists and singers and all this that are coming up along with the ones that are already there right mm-hmm. um, I think that that's the biggest is like if you don't if you just say it but you actually like you say yeah I'm an athlete but you still abide by like all this ideas of like it's okay I'm just hurt and I don't want to like or it's okay, this is just how it is. Or like, it's just the normalcy of like having a tweaked ankle or the normalcy of having a tweaked shoulder or wrist or like, oh yeah, it's my Achilles, that happens all the time. Or it's my hamstring, that's just the thing. That's just, just get used to it kind of thing. Um, yeah. I think if you continue abiding by that and devaluing what your body and your worth as an athlete, as a performer is, then there's no way that they will ever see. Um, the value the value in like a performer and athlete like and treat them like that so there's no way you're gonna be able to ask for like the the like the fact that there are athletes going on tours and there or there are like performers going on tours keep calling performers are going on tours and they're going on like cruises or going on all this and they have contracts and they're um they have no idea of how to like how they're supposed to be either preparing for it like, taking care of themselves for longevity or while they're there how they should yeah. be perhaps like recovering like, or yeah, training recovering or treating their bodies or or anything like and then if they're going from one to another or if there's an in-between time what they should be doing there or how should yeah. they be eating or all those all those little things that are yeah, a huge thing the fact that they have nobody tell them that or nobody on staff to like give them that or to treat yeah, them. Yeah, because I don't, I don't think cruises have that, right? Or used to have that. Because I know a friend of mine did like a one-year contract. And uh, I, I don't really remember him telling me that there was any type of like, they have like, like trainer. Some, yeah. No, they have someone um, at the beginning, I believe. The one, at least the one that, the experience that I have, well, so they have somebody at the beginning that just kind of gives them a couple of like, this is what you should do here and there. But it's nothing specific. It's nothing like they don't have their own time. And then when they're on cruise, it doesn't matter. There is, one cruise line, well, that is beginning to ch- well, that was beginning to change that <laughs> was, um, um, and I think that, that that they're trying to start to change a couple of things of that. They started to like value performers a little bit more in the sense that they treat them as like guest performers rather than mm-hmm. just the regular in house. The regular. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But other than that, I think that the fact that that is a thing, in fact, if you sign a contract and you basically don't have anything from them that's like supporting you or giving you the value of like, I need this because if uh, for just learning to treat myself for other years so I can last and perform better throughout this whole contract. I mean, like that's just completely, that seems nonsensical.